Hello, it's your best friend here, and welcome to the 20th stage dishes MLC Shield Italia. This is the last chance for the main GC contenders that is not named Ryder Heschel. Let's take a look. Malamath, 35 seconds behind. Betancourt, 1 minute and 1 second behind. Valverde, 1 minute 36 percent. 1 minute and 36 seconds behind. These three men are the only guys who have a chance of beating Heschel today. Are we going to see Heschel keep the Magnet Rose from like stage 11 to stage 21? That would be a huge upset. Nobody expected that Heschel would win this year's MLC Show d'Italia. The cards were favored in Valverde's hands, but he didn't do. He didn't show up. He didn't do nothing. But Ronaldo Nocentini does go in the breakaway. I said yesterday that I would be mind boggled if Ronaldo Nocentini didn't go in the breakaway. Nocentini is gonna try to keep this jersey by going in the breakaway today. How many points can he get? How many points can he get? He can get five plus ten. He get fifteen points. We will put him in a uh, sixteen point lead. How many points do you get in the end? You get. You get. Five points in the end on winning that mountain. So if Nocentini wins the second and the first one, it's all over. Nocentini won the overall climate competition. Also, by going on the breakaway, he's now leading the king of the breakaway. Langbord actually took some points in the end. Brent Billy also going to win the breakaway. Michael Rodgers wants to go away. Reblon, wait, where is Reblon? Let me just take a look. Reblon, I know he's in here somewhere. Reblon's now got three times in the breakaway. So he's only one behind Ronald Nocentini. So we need to go in the breakaway tomorrow if he wants to tie for this one. But this is a huge break. And they have a chance of winning today. But Ronaldo Nocentini wants to go for this category two and this category one. I can assure you that. Michel Scarponi had a crash. The sixth overall in the GC had a crash. And we see the entire team sky coming down to help Michel Scarponi. This does not seem good for a rider like this on today's stage. He's going to have to use energy now to get back to the peloton. Michel Scarponi is having a terrible day. And now his team are not even coming back. They're not coming back. Oh, there he is back. But he used a lot of energy just to get back on his feet and get back into the, into the peloton. Meanwhile, in the attack, we saw that Daniel Moreno tried to attack and wants to bridge the gap up to the sixth man group and this uh, soon to be seven man group has a th has a gap of three minutes and 40 seconds can they hold it today can Ronaldo Nocentini win on this category two and this category one and secure his overall mountain classification who would have thought that it wouldn't have been a GC contender winning this jersey here we go again. Mikhail Kalkowski, Nicholas Roach, and Thibaut Pinot all attacked away from the main group and want to go on their own. Mikhail Kalkowski has not had the MLC of his dream. And of course, of course, Cat Evans has to attack. Of course, what would this attack be without Cat Evans? I think that is like 6 out of 6 times he's done this attack. Sadly for Cat Evans, this does not count as king of the breakaway. A breakaway is when you go from kilometer 0 to the end. You have to go in the first 20 kilometers. He did not. He has never done that really. He always does his attack and it never works out for him. Yesterday I think he got 3rd place and we'll see, uh, 2 days ago he got 3rd place. Let's see what he can do today though. He needs to win a stage finally. Cat Evans needs to win a stage. I cannot believe that this man attacked so much and has got nothing out of it in this entire MLC show. Italia. But we're now climbing this category too, and as you see, the gradients are quite high, and therefore some riders in the peloton will be hurting now, but the Tosso fan is keeping a nice pace, just working together as a team. Already now, there is separation in the peloton. This is a 30-man group. This does not look good for some of the riders, but it's promising for the stage. If they can keep the high pace up for the next 60 kilometers, it's going to be an action-packed stage. Meanwhile, Renato Nocentini is sitting in the back of this group. He needs to get to the front. 1.8 to go. He needs to win this. He has to win this mountain classification sprint. If he has any dreams of keeping this jersey, in case of Betancourt or any or Valverde for that sake, wins today's stage. And yes, here he goes. One kilometer to the top. Renato Nocentini has to go for it. He has to go for it. He has to to win this one, he has to win this one, he's gonna go for it, 800 meters to go, he's got a 20 second gap, nobody's really following, Brent Biela is keeping a decent pace, this might just be to annoy him, because I know Phil Schilbert and Greg Van Ironman and Vada Pauls and all these other guys have also been going for this uh, for this uh, mountain jersey, and yes, Brent Biela is gonna catch him, are they gonna overhaul him, are they gonna overhaul him, no, Nocentini uses some track tactics to block them, he's now got a 6 uh, point gap down to Alverde, and I think this almost seals the deal, at the final uh, mountain, you can get 5 points, I think that is going to seal the deal for Ronaldo Nocentini. But down the peloton, there is big separation. If they're going to keep this pace up for another 6 kilometers, who knows? Oh, Cooney got dropped. Ninth overall in the GC has been dropped. Sean Christophe Peru has been dropped. Jürgen van der Broek has been dropped. Oh, this stage is so exciting already. Basso has been dropped. Horner has been dropped. Oh, this is not good for the Tudors team. Full sign has been dropped. We're going to see a major shakeup in the GC if they do not catch up on this downhill now. But I don't. I doubt they'll slow down on this category 1. If they already kept this high pace now, why would they slow down? 
Here we go again, this is where Ronaldo Nocentini stage ends. He needs to be first over this line, and then he basically won this jersey already. And it looks like nobody else will catch him. He's gonna go for it now, but he slows down. Why is he slowing down? Is Simon Spiel like going for this? Oh, there's separation in this group now. We're gonna see people getting dropped. Brambilo looks to be dropped. Reblon is in trouble. Nocentini goes to the back. What is Nocentini doing? Nocentini mistimed his attack and got no points in this one. He got no points. Ooh, I'm not sure if he's got it though. Is it like something like double points on a mountain finish like the Tour de France? We'll have to see, but it all depends on the Verder or Malama can win. I'm not sure how they uh, the, they put this down, but I think Nocentini has this one according to the race results, but we will see. 38 kilometers to the go though, and the breakaway has 3 minutes and 25 seconds on the main group down here. Koenig caught up, and some of the other favorites did catch up with this group. Full second caught up. You can find the Brook. Did he not catch up? I don't think he caught up actually. Where did Mike did not catch up? Uh, what, how far back is he? Oh, what an exciting stage so far, but it's not, it's far from over yet though. 35 kilometers to go and it's anybody's stage. The breakaway could even win this stage. It is not, it is not Marty C. Shield Italia so far. Kwiatkowski just fell. He was in that favorite group in the front and now he's behind the Melon Peloton. On this downhill, Mikhail Kwiatkowski fell off his bike and that's gonna be the end of his MLC Shield Italia. He can cross that off as a failure. He'll probably come back next year or next edition of the MLC, which is the Tour de France, and try to do better because this was surely a disappointment. With 20 kilometers to go, the main group in the front has three minutes on the, on the Peloton and if they can keep this up, a guy like Michael Rogers will be looking good. Who else is in here that can time travel? Oh, that can uh, mountain real good. Mountain right. It's uh, we have Simon Spielike. Brian Bill looks to be in trouble. He did that before at least. My money's on either Simon Spielike, Daniel Moreno, or Mick Rogers. Mick Rogers is looking really good sitting all in the front already. Oh, it looks like uh, Cat Evans is trying to do something. Cat Evans goes for this one. He's leaving Pinot behind. Also, Rogers in the front though. He's trying to catch up. Is this the stage that Evans is gonna win? Is this the day where Evans will finally win his very first stage? Let's take a time check. How much of a time? How much of a gap? does he have he's got a one minute gap that's gonna be tough to, uh, to keep because I expect the main favorites to attack they have to do something today or oh, Sashi Madoa has fallen I hear that over the race radio it's not gonna matter though because he's not been sprinting he's not been helping his mountain riders at all it's been a bad day for Rookie Greenwich so far uh where is Koenig anyway where's Koenig I don't I don't see him in this group I don't see I literally don't see Koenig in this group. This is not good for the two dude and their overall GC. We'll see how the overall GC looks after the day stage. Jorgen van der Broek also looks... Oh, he's actually back. Jorgen van der Broek is back, though. But here we go. We start the Monsan clan. The steepest climb in this year's MLC Shield de Italia. Who's going to win on today's stage? It looks to be a breakaway companion that might win today's stage. But it all comes down to how fast is Valverde going to attack? When are they going to attack? Well, Maloma, does he want to do anything? He's 35 seconds behind Eshidal. He has to find 35 seconds somewhere in today's stage. It's gonna be interesting though. <coughs> Essentially, the Shield Italia ends today. This is the last time you'll be able to get a time gap. Malama guessing is going in the front. Heschel's in the left. Heschel might be in trouble. Bettencourt has got Pelisati helping him. Port is in the back. Port is gonna... Port is all isolated. Jelly Bell has got no one to help him. Laverde's on sitting on the left. It's not No intention of attacking just yet. No intention. He doesn't want to go too early. In the front though, Evans has a one minute gap. Let's go all the way to the front. Oh, Mick Rogers is going. Michael Rogers left everyone else behind. And Tenel Kanger is going. Why is Tanel Kanger going? And why is, Ke uh, is Valverde not going for it? Valverde is not interested to attack. But look at these one-man wide roads. Oh, we're getting into narrow roads. How many of those roads will we see? Let's go to the light. Go to the map. Oh, this mountain is all one wide road. They can't get even. They can't get further to the front. They did not think about this. And Heschel is in prime position. This entire mountain is a one-man wide road street. So if you're not sitting well, it's going to be tough moving up. And Valverde is in trouble. Valverde is in trouble. Malama is also sitting pretty poor. No, he's actually sitting on Heschel's wheel. That's pretty good. But look at this Tosmo Flander and train sitting at high pace. We see Pelisati trying to move Betzenko to the front. And Sousi trying to help Valverde, but it might have been too late. They were not well placed going on to this Monsanto Uncle Land Mountain. Oh, Valverde is getting dropped a tiny bit. Valverde needs to get to the front. If he's got any plans of attacking, he has to do it right now. Oh, I hear the evidence on the radio. Evans is trying to catch up. I heard over the race on the radio that Cattle Evans was trying to attack. And he's making his way up there, though. But he has to catch Meek Rogers in the front. And this does not look promising to him, though. But down the main group, nobody's attacking. Oh, Mama goes. Mama Let's go to the front. Vegeta got blocked by his own rider. Heschel finds an open lane though. He finds an open lane. He's gonna go for it. Egon trying to start to set a high pace. Look at this Tosmo Flandern team setting the high pace. It is unbearable for some riders. And the gradients are so high. But there is a gap. There is gonna be a gap. We have three men in the front. And Heschel is following it though. Also Kangar is up here. 
Mount Vernon goes on the right, but Vernon's poorly positioned. Marlon is making his way to the front though, but look at this four-man train from Tosma Fan is driving away. That four-man train is just driving away. Oh, Marlon is trying to attack. Marlon is trying to go somewhere. He's sitting nicely though. He's sitting on Hesha's wheel. He has to do something though. In the front though, we have Mikkel Watcher sitting all alone. Let's take a quick look. Mikkel Watcher has got a big gap. Kirienka is trying to follow this, but look at these, look at these gradients. Look at how steep this is, and oh, look at the roads. Marlon has to do something. Oh, Bettingo got dropped. Bettingcourt has been dropped. Third of all in the GC. This could be Valverde riding onto the podium. Betancourt has to attack to catch back up to the main group. He used a lot of energy. When will we see the big guys attack? Hesedal goes to the front now. Four kilometers to go. They have four kilometers to put in an attack. Valverde's gonna go. Valverde's gonna attack with Betancourt in his wheel. This is the decisive attack from Valverde. Valverde's gonna go. Hesedal's falling though. Malma's gonna get dropped. Malma's gonna get dropped. All the way in the front. Big Roger is still sitting good. Big Roger is still sitting good. He's got three kilometers to go. Hesedal's going to the front. Evans is gonna get caught by this group. It's not Evans today. Today either. Betancourt is gonna go as well. Betancourt sitting on the outside. He's gonna try to do something. Malma looks to be in trouble. Valverde's also in trouble. But Betancourt is a big guy that can do something today. But Hesiel is going strong. Hesiel is leaving everyone else behind. Malma can't fall. Malma, was, Malma gets blocked. Malma is going to get blocked. Betancourt can ride his way into second position. Malma and Valverde hitting a roadblock. They hit a roadblock. Oh my god, that is a terrible news. Oh my god, that's just bad for the race. But in the front, Hesha and Betsy are going strong so far. They're going strong. They got 1 minute and 30 up to Mick Rogers in the front. Can they catch him? Mick Rogers has 1.5 to go. Is this going to be Sky's day to win? Kerry Yang is also in the front though. But behind, Valverde has got a 43 second gap up to him. And Molema is just losing it today. Molema is losing the Shield Italian right here, right now. He can't catch up. Valverde is trying to catch up 1.5 to go. But Betancourt has caught Kerry Yang. Betancourt and Hesha has caught Kerry Yang. But is it too late? Can they catch Mick Rogers? Can Hesha bang off and off this game or this year's MLC Shield Italian with a victory. They're trying to catch up to Mikel Rogers. It's an outlook that they can. And Mikel Rogers will take this year's MLC Shield Italian's final stage on the mount final mountain stage. He's gonna take the victory. But more important news, Betsinko rides his way into top uh, into second place. But Hesiodal, the big winner of this year's MLC Shield Italia, winning the overall class uh, the overall GC. Meanwhile, we see down here that Malama Rode his way out of top three right there. That was poor news. Nocentini looked like he's going to keep... It looks like Nocentini is going to keep this mountain classification. Good job by you. What a finishing stage. We had everything. We had attacks. We had one-man right roads. Wrong placements. We had blocks and everything. And they almost caught Mikael Rogers in the end. But Hesedan Bentecourt wasn't fast enough. Here is the st stage 20 rankings. Mikael Rogers actually won by 30 seconds down to Hesedan Bentecourt. Meanwhile, Bentecourt took one minute and... 30 seconds, no, what is that? Yes, yeah, 1 minute and like no, 40 seconds on Malama. And here we have probably the final standings. Hesedal wins this year's MLC Shield Italia with 1 minute down to Bettencourt, 2 minutes 28 down to Malama. And Valverde loses third place by 1 second. 1 second away for Valverde to get on the podium. Can he catch that tomorrow? Will we see Valverde try to get that? Bettencourt wins the overall points jersey by 1 point down to Malama. 1 point is separating Malama and Bettencourt. This is the closest MLC ever. Let's take a look at the mountain classification though. Did Nocentini keep that one? Did Nocentini keep this one? Yes, he did. He kept it with six points down to Alberta. So congratulations to Langbor for taking something out of this one. Nocentini also won the SEMA copy, so it's well deserving that he also wins the overall mountain classification because he was over the highest altitude in the MLC Shield Italia and he also deserves to win this one. And Bettencourt wins the Young Guys classification with 30 minutes down to second place. What a poor showing from all these young guys. I mean, Betancourt was the only guy that really showed up out of all these young guys. And Sagan managed to get 6th like he normally does. Overall team classification goes to Team 3M, but it's only 25 seconds in front of Team Optum. Can they do something tomorrow? Peter Sagan can catch 27, 20 seconds tomorrow. Theoretically, if Peter Sagan wins tomorrow, they catch 20 seconds. And there will only be a 5 second gap between 3M and Optum. What an exciting stage, guys. What do you think about today's stage? I want to hear from Fiaskoche. How do you feel about you securing first place? It can only go wrong for you tomorrow, but I, I doubt there'll be any time gaps tomorrow. Tomorrow is a stage where Peter Sagan is going to be the favorite. But what do you think about today's stage? What are you excited? Did it live up to expectations? Normally, the final mountain stage is a big disappointment, but I gotta say, Mount Sankoland really lived up to my expectations. Thank you guys for watching, and you'll just quickly see the overall GC contending. So, uh, Vandenberg 10th, uh, Volsang just missing out in 11th place, missing out of points. Sad for him, but this is how the final GC uh, standings will look like, because I doubt there'll be any changes tomorrow, except that there's gonna be a crash, punchers, or anything else. We might see abandonment, who knows, but uh, actually, how close is the points classification? I forgot to look there. How close is that? So, uh, Kill can get the 
25 points tomorrow, it looks to be all over Kittle. It looks to be all over Kittle and Sagan. But thank you guys for watching. Please give a like, please share this video. So far, this has been the best MLC ever.